So we're here today with Anae Paez in her house in Costa Rica, which is super cool because we've known each other for, I think, four. 17 years. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> we met when we were 14 uh, and I was living here in Costa Rica and we used to sit together nearby each other in physics class here That's and right. Uh, write notes and throw things with boys. So. We go back a long time, and uh, I'm super excited to be interviewing you today because, similar to me, and actually a number of people who graduated with us, we've ended up being entrepreneurs and running our own show. Um, and I love your story. I think your story is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought you'd be a perfect person to interview for everyone. So um, tell us a little bit about what it is that you do in your business, and, and also where you run your business, because it's not here, technically. No. It's based here. Right? It's born in Costa Rica, but it's exported to Barcelona, Spain, but for Europe. So yeah, we're working with farmers and building relationships with farmers here in Costa Rica and trying to get their coffees or place their coffees out in Europe. Fantastic. So it's basically an import-export business, but a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. And how long have you guys been running this import-export business now? Um, it's hard to say when there's a start or there's a, we've been dreaming about it for a long time. It's me and my partner, my life and business partner. We're doing this together. Um, we've dreaming about it for a long time and lots of education involved. Mm -hmm. um, since 2004, basically education. And we've been, this is a second career for us. So we still have other activities that we're not totally, you know, disconnected from. Um, so learning and building it all up, but finally last year we materialized our first big import to Europe. Wow. So from 2004 to, to 2012 was your first big import? Yeah, I think we didn't move to Spain till, um, until 2007. Okay. okay. And then the whole crisis exploded in our faces. Yeah. <laughs> the whole bubble European Spain crisis. So Which yeah. could have been a massive deterrent, but you guys went ahead anyway. No. Nope. Yeah. Hmm. We really believe in the project and we love it and it's 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 a passion thing and yeah. it's going to work and it's working. It's yeah. working, yeah. for sure, for sure. Well, I witnessed it firsthand exactly. on this trip <laughs> and it's it's been phenomenal. It's been really, really inspiring to see what you guys do and how you're able to connect directly to the growers mm -hmm. and um, that's fantastic. So um, I think what you were saying, you know, like it's you started kind of your education and dreaming about it in 2004, but didn't actually make your first big import until 2012. I think this is a really, really important point to pay attention to because a lot of people who go into business think, I'm going to make it happen. I, by next year, I'm going to be making all this money. Yeah, no, it's not. That's not the case. Not the case. <laughs> um, we are sort of, you know, entrepreneurs and just runs through us. It's not the first project that we tackle. So, you know, we know it's... It takes time. You have to have patience and you have to believe in it. Yeah, for sure. So what did you say, what would you say was the biggest struggle for you guys? Knowing, having already built a business, mm -hmm. knowing what you were up for to some degree, what do you think was the hardest part of building the coffee business for you? It's a completely different business from what we you know, studied or what we had our formal education in. So we had to learn everything from scratch. Mm -hmm. And it's a very closed circle. Coffee is a commodity. People forget this, but coffee is a commodity. It's mm -hmm. the second most traded commodity in the world. It's a very traditional business, and we're trying to break in there with the new values and a new vision, and we want to do things differently, and we don't know if it's going to work. We don't mm -hmm. know if it's going to be accepted. Some people are trying to do it, and some, you know, mm -hmm. it's it was a different thing, so mm -hmm. you never know when you try to innovate or when you try to do things differently, you don't know if it's going to work. Mm -hmm, for sure. And also breaking into a market that's already exactly. saturated, that's right? Exactly. Very a lot of... A lot of... It's all set up. For sure. For Nothing sure. Nothing else to do in coffee. No, there is. Yeah. <laughs> so we think there is. So what is it that makes you guys different? What is it specifically that that you're trying to do differently? It's exactly this. These relationships and uh, empowering the farmer to have control over his own product where it's mm -hmm. never been done that way. Mm -hmm. So it's a very traditional product and... The consumer doesn't know anything about it, so that gives less power to the producer. He has no tools to get his wonderful product out there. So we're working with producers that are also innovating in their techniques and their production, um, focusing quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're trying to have people try. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Can it's you, more sustainable. Can you maybe draw sort of the picture really briefly of like traditional coffee, how people would have normally got their coffee out to the market where, where nobody is aware of what the producer is mm -hmm. like versus you connecting, you know, um, roasters and everything to the individual farmers, like actually knowing who they are and what kind of what, yeah. what they do on their land. There's still a lot of players in, in, in the coffee because there has to be somebody who prepares this product to be shipped. So obviously we're talking about the now, or what we're trying to do, we're trying to keep it at minimum four hands. The producer, you know, the, the, the exporter, the importer, and the final buyer. Hmm. Those four hands, where traditionally it could go through eight to twelve hands. That many. So each person that it goes through, there's, you know, markup. Right, absolutely. And, and you lose track, because the, the coffee would be... The coffee price was set by stock markets, completely removed from the country where the coffee comes from and in, in, in no way connected to the producer at all. The producer had no say in what this, this um, product was being sold at. Mm -hmm. So this new market, the specialty coffee market, doesn't, isn't ruled or, or doesn't go with the coffee prices set by the commodity market mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so and, that and in itself is different for sure and I saw mm -hmm. that when I was out with you guys mm -hmm. on that day in the farms you had end users yeah, meeting exactly. the growers and saying yeah, exactly. like how much you want to charge for this like mm -hmm. literally having those mm -hmm. pricing conversations and it's really interesting to see how that then empowers the the, the coffee producer yeah, themselves exactly. before they wouldn't even know what their coffee was sold at mm. but I'm bringing the person that buys their coffee at destination to the, the producer and saying he sells your coffee for this much, just mm -hmm. so you know, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. and it's really amazing. Well, what do you think has been the biggest, um, like sort of, what's the word, the, the biggest payoff, but from a, from a feelings perspective, as opposed to a business perspective, like how, what, how, what's this done for you and your partner Manuel in building this business? I think it's the progress together with everybody mm -hmm. as a person, you get to see, uh, things that we are from the IT back communication IT background. Mm -hmm. It's all always very um, You don't really see the impact they can have you know, you don't really you're not involved with that company to see how it Helps them and their service now you can actually see how it helps the person that's selling you this product their progress mm -hmm. And even the person that's buying this product from you mm -hmm. how it's accepted in their market how people their reactions to this product that's being made so far away and by people who are so different from them. Mm -hmm. And it's this connection, this feeling the, of, of being connected mm -hmm. to something bigger and progress and mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. like that. So if you were to give advice to someone who is trying to create a business that is a, it, where that's a big value, like a connection to community, um, really like a heart-centered or soul-centered kind of a business mm -hmm. and they're just starting out, what would you say is the most valuable uh, trait that they can have as an entrepreneur? What's the thing that they need to sort of grow within themselves the most in order to make sure that they don't get, um, you know, derailed by the setbacks mm -hmm. and whatnot? Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's being confident and really believing in it and, and being patient and persistent. Mm -hmm. And obviously surrounding yourself by people who are going to add to that and, and believe in the belief that you have and support what you're doing and, and, and understand it and and communicate. You have to tell people what you're doing and see their reactions, but always, you know, being strong in what you, you believe in is, is, is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, to me, when it I think... to guide you. Your belief has to guide you. For sure. What, I, what that makes me think of is being connected to the why. Mm -hmm. Like always going like, why mm -hmm. am I doing exactly. this? I'm doing exactly. this because... Mm. It so, gets really hard at times and, and you don't see... It's not an immediate payoff, so you have to really yeah. stick to that why. Mm -hmm. If not, it's, it's, it's not going to take you further. You're not going to be motivated. For sure. Yeah. yeah. So what's next for you guys? We like to enjoy every day. <laughs> and, uh, everyday presents are, are great. <laughs> cool. What's next? We like to feel it. And, and it'll feel right. It won't feel right. And obviously, at some point, there is. You have to connect the numbers to what's going on, and it has to work. So when those things don't add up, we'll be okay. We'll ask what's next. For now, we're doing it. You know? Awesome. And, and we're enjoying every day. 
Awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. Thank you so much for letting me interview you. And like, it's so great to be in your house here and back. I feel like thank it's like you. Thank you for the picture. Flashback thank you for coming are you. Yes. <laughs> it's like youth plus though, because we've, we've got some cool stories to share. So that that's great. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.